please go ahead. Yeah. Oh, okay, good. Uh, is the recording started? I cannot see it. No, this is a free account, so I'm recording ah. on screen. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, great, great. No worries. <clears throat> okay, so uh, thanks for coming. here. So initially, these things are supposed to be uh, uh, talked about in ST4, although online. Uh, uh, but for some weird reasons with South Africa, which is still going on, by the way. Uh, so I was not able to give that and um, that time. So although this letter is about high energy uh, things mostly, but uh, uh, since ST4 um, uh, is more towards, uh, I mean, uh, a lot of other background people should eventually come about. So here, what I have decided uh, to do is to uh, give you guys a very introductory things on machine learning, how things work, how. Uh, how actually things were I mean, going inside the uh, machine. Uh, but eventually, the target is to um, teach machine learning as a tool uh, that you might use um, in your um, in your inner you know, works at some point, some ideas or something. So uh, this would be very beginning. Uh, the first lecture would be very beginning oriented, probably a less physics, more about machines and all those things. Uh, tomorrow, I will go more deeper into uh, the theoretical part of it with quantum mechanics and all those things. And uh, um, uh, of course, a third lecture, which I think I cannot be delivered in, in a row, but at some point, probably we need that. There, I would go into more deeper details and more um, advanced steps and what exactly is people doing in terms of uh, CFPs or um, uh, Calabria manifolds and all. But that's uh, something, it's a future goal. I'm not going there. So after today, I would really uh, expect that people would come up or something, just say what uh, they would uh, want to listen next day. I can tune my things uh, towards that direction. So before going into uh, teaching machine learning, of course, uh, in principle, in an uh, environment uh, where you really need to learn machine learning, you need a machine actually uh, to code up things. Uh, since that's not there, so I'll be keeping the details as uh, the, the, the coding part would be very less. At least in the beginning, I'm not included. I'm not included any coding. Uh, but tomorrow, I'm uh, thinking of uh, giving some examples. Uh, you can, of course, do all the things in any language uh, you guys want. It does not matter. So today, that's why I will go, go through the overview of the algorithm and things that you can implement in any code uh, coding language you want or Mathematica already have all the packages. So you guys are more or less familiar with Mathematica, so you can use that as well. But just before I'm going there, <clears throat> just to get a you know overview, how many of you can ever, you can raise your hands probably, that how many of you have, uh, I mean, at some point uh, did, uh, uh, I mean, coding or something? Do you have any uh, any anything related to coding? Can you just raise your hand? That would be great. Excellent. Excellent. So there's 12 raised hand. Oh, that's coming more. Excellent. So so what I will do is next day, I will also go to a bit of uh, coding. But since Python is very easy, uh, you can understand what exactly is uh, going on. Oh, guys, you can uh, lower your hand. Uh, <coughs> you can understand what exactly is going on. So <coughs> doesn't. Uh, doesn't matter. So uh, let me begin uh, the the things, and uh, and I would look forward to your questions or suggestions because with that I will change the lectures a bit. So this is something that uh, I'm not uh, an expert on the machine learning part. Uh, we normally use it as a as theoretical pieces to use this thing as tools. So of course, as you ask more and more questions, I can go in uh, details, and I would understand in which direction the lecture should go. Okay, good. So uh, as the name suggests, that, uh, this is about how to train your machine. And uh, since these are theoretical phases that work, so um, very, very, you should be very cautious about uh, the statement that I would make about computer science and all those things. So, um, yeah, feel free to uh, debate or argue against whatever I'm saying. Okay, <coughs> good. So the main objective, of course, as I'm saying, to introduce the machine learning as a tool for theoretical CSF. So I would uh, really like you to understand what's going under the hood. And of course, I would uh, like you guys to know how to implement that in a code. 
and some with some example of course so um, there are this uh, three references are really nice if you want to read them as a theoretical thesis if you are more inclined towards um, if you want to know what people are working on string theory and all exactly what is they are doing i would suggest uh, going through fabian's uh, this uh, thing it's uh, I, I, there, there's no archive upload so <clears throat> you can just read the, just search the name and it will be there it's a very well written part and most of my talks will be probably borrowed from fabian or uh, florian i forgot the name I forgot to write the name there's also one lecture series by Lodi and uh, Mark Wall. That's also really nice. I learned every bit more or less from there. And uh, these are some open source books, Nielsen and uh, Goodfellow. These are, uh, you can just uh, download them. This Nielsen book probably we can just directly download. And this book, uh, the third reference, uh, you can just read it. Uh, it's not <coughs> directly available, but in the, on the HTML you can read. So these are good references and uh, softwares that normally people use uh, for this uh, for for uh, machine learning usually involves Python, Keras, and TensorFlow, PyTorch, and so on and so forth. But <coughs> of course, in principle, you can write it in any language you in, uh, you want. And in fact, uh, tomorrow I would give you example uh, writing everything in terms of Python only without using uh, TensorFlow or any package. Just once you understand the maths, you can write it in any any uh, code uh, language you want. And of course, in Mathematica, there are already packages. So you can learn things in uh, Mathematica as well. And just uh, start simple simulations and all in Mathematica. But uh, if you really want to do some heavy coding or some long running codes, then I would suggest going to Python. Uh, because that have uh, more packages there and and it's easy to code okay so uh, this thing uh, of, of course i would exclude some ancient text which might have already the, all the modern tools uh, but uh, barring those ancient texts uh, this historic some some just a bit of history that uh, where did all these things started of course uh, 1950 we have to talk about it because 1950 Alan Turing first proposed that he changed the imitation game and uh, proposed how to distinguish between a machine and a human and artificial intelligence thing started in some sense from there. Then in 1956 mm. the artificial intelligence term was first coined mm. and uh, people started after that people started developing different uh, codes and all which can learn by themselves. What What is learning by themselves that I will uh, come in a uh, come in a bit, but things are so advanced now uh, that by 2015-16 uh, uh, we have different uh, machines which can uh, we, we can defeat uh, uh, chess players or AlphaGo things are defeated. So lot of exciting things in that direction. And uh, what normally we as a physicist we do is that we'll take uh, the standard examples that people are using. Uh, in terms of so machine learning, for example, in your Facebook or everything, everywhere the, the AI or something is uh, working, and uh, their algorithms, although they are tuned for some images or uh, some calculations that we would use, so engineers uh, use uh, build them and around. Uh, but what we as a physicists do is just uh, take whatever they have done and uh, tweak them around. So, in principle. If you know what are the packages uh, that you need to use and the terms that I would uh, go through in details in the course of this lecture, if you know the terms and uh, some packages or their, how, how to use those packages, like the overview, then uh, you can actually start uh, your own business on machine learning. It's that easy now. There are so many packages and things like that. So, as I've said, <coughs> Uh, that learning, what I mean by uh, learning in a code. What do you mean by a, a code that is uh, that is learning? So, in standard or in classical programmer programming, what we do is that we developers we read and understand the different aspects of the problem uh, we are trying to solve, and uh, we, in principle, know what all the rules are to go to the solution. So, for example, say you want to solve a um, uh, you want to solve a, you know, some, uh, some 
some uh, corners matter problem or you are going to uh, start finding a you want to look for some ground state with void function or something similar <clears throat> then of course you know all the rules of the game you can write a code and uh, you, you will have some solution it may take a long time uh, but eventually you would have a solution <clears throat> now machine learning the coding of machine learning is intuitively you can understand it as uh, learning from example what do i mean by that is that human learning in some sense say i want to write a code uh, we should understand uh, or, or differentiate whatever we want to think about it. Let's say it, you want to differentiate between a circle and square, as this example says. So, of course, in a standard uh, way, you would, what you would run is that if number of corners equal to zero, return circle. If number of corners equal to four, mm, uh, return square. So, given uh, this symbol, uh, given this uh, this this thing. You can ask what is the shape of this thing, and it should calculate what are the number, uh, what are the number of corners, and it would just say, okay, the number of corners is zero, so it should be a circle. Okay. But on the other hand, the machine learning coding is a bit different. Where what you do is that you provide the code with examples. So you put a lot of examples, lot of different types of circles and all, and all those things uh, you uh, classify them as uh, circles. And uh, you give an example, a setup example like this, and just you just say that okay, these are uh, squared. And they were, they would, what you would expect is that now, given a uh, given any shape, this kind of shape, uh, your machine should tell that this is circle. Okay. So the basic difference is difference is this one. This is the main crux of the main difference. That uh, in in a standard classical programming, what you do is that you you tell the machine what exactly to do. And it will follow your things. And here, uh, what you give is that you throw uh, example towards it. How and why will go come uh, once uh, things are clear. Will go there, and uh, you throw examples at it, and it would pick up from the examples some features or something uh, from that, and then it would just uh, say uh, what it is. Okay. Now. Uh, uh, the standard, as I'm also saying, the standard coding algorithms are constrained by if, do, while, for, all these uh, loops and uh, logical statements. Uh, but even very intelligent uh, programmers can only cover a finite number of scenarios. Not all scenarios can be covered. That's why you have bugs in the code. And once somebody figure out a bug, it need to be fixed. So, for example, let's say you want to write. I mean, this is a very crude example. Okay? Let's say you want to uh, write something for a self-driving car. And for the self-driving car, you said, OK, if you see human, you stop. If you see water, you slow down. If there is a green signal, you say, OK, drive. And if there is red, you say, uh, stop. Don't move to go. Now, there can be a situation where there is a human on a wet road, and the traffic signal is green. Now, what should the car do? It would get confused, right? And uh, then this is a situation that this particular situation you have to tell it beforehand that if this thing happens, what it should do. So there are in a in a in a in our real world there are infinite possibilities. And if you want to want something to uh, work like a human or some uh, some level of understanding, then there are infinite possibilities and that you cannot cover, or you can probably, but. Uh, not uh, generally, you cannot cover all the possibilities. It would be an enormous uh, job to do. And of course, those are not uh, even if you write uh, everything. Since you are only, you can only cover finite things. So those would anyway not be uh, practical. So the question arises: Is that uh, can we uh, mimic a uh, human brain, okay? uh, or it is brain, whatever? Not only human. Uh, but see, for example, as if, if you are still listening and you can uh, read, you are reading the whatever written in this notes, then somehow you, you are understanding my bad handwriting. So my handwriting is really bad, but somehow you can still understand all of these things written here are uh, just handwriting, same word. Okay? Now your brain is somehow interpreting this as this text, where you can clearly understand this is uh, this is what I meant by this uh, this this garbage. So this garbage is equivalent to handwriting. This is what you know. Your brain understands. Now the question is that: Can we do the same? Can we write something, or can we do something uh, where 
I can I can I can do the same. So this deep learning or that that will go slowly. This deep learning tries to mimic the same procedure, the same uh, understanding basically, the same understanding, uh, but through artificial neurons. What are artificial neurons and all? We'll go there. So in this uh, literature, since there are computer science people, theoretical thesis, all of them are merging together very people are working on it right now so there are a lot of terms that have been going around so i just thought that probably it's a good time to differentiate uh, between those terms and slowly build up things so in principle in 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 the current context um, uh, this is the kind of situation that goes on that whenever we say ai or artificial intelligence that's a that's the biggest domain in something that contains everything that's the biggest thing and then this machine learning is just a subset of AI. All the things that AI can do, uh, machine learning is just a part of it. So this AI, you can think of it as just the ability to imitate intelligence, intelligence of uh, human. It can be either very high level intelligence like uh, Skynet or something similar, or, or it can be as uh, unintelligent as, uh, you know, your not anything, but uh, as bad as your uh, OK Google things or your Alexa things uh, like that. So the, both all all the things are included in this AI domain. And machine learning is just application of some set of AI algorithm that allows the system to learn and improve from experience. So as it works on something, it slowly <coughs> improves itself. So, so, code in some sense, uh, not, not the coding part, but it's sometimes the, the behavior of the uh, output uh, improves as it gets more and more experience. Like similar to uh, what how your uh, Gmail and uh, Google are starting to predict your predict your things or, or YouTube suggest you uh, songs one after another once you start listening to your, uh, your genre, your favorite genre. And deep learning is a further uh, very uh, narrow subset of machine learning. Machine learning is again big, and this is the application of ML that uses very complicated, uh, or it can use uh, a very complex algorithm, and uh, it uh, and, and deep neural nets, uh, neural nets with multiple layers, uh, and and you try to train a uh, model. This deep learning will go into neural nets and model in the, in this talk. So so yeah, what we will be interested or what we will be working is that our basic unit will be some neural network so that's what i will teach you in this through this thing that how this neural networks are built and what is the meaning of it then once you know neural network that's uh, that from the for using neural network you can uh, go in uh, this part or this part or that part in all those parts neural networks are very essential whether you are doing deep learning machine learning ai yeah, does not matter uh, so that's a neural network and more or less the graphs of it and then we'll go through the network now, as I'm saying that there are a lot of buzzwords that's been uh, going on, uh, and people have divided AI in so many forms and uh, so many uh, so many levels. So I thought that I just put out uh, some types that I think are, are there. There, people can divide it in more subparts or something. I don't know. So AI can be, of course, one would be reactive. That it could just react and do not form memories, do not use past experience like Google Translate. Uh, it can have some set of limited uh, memory. It references to the past. It, uh, it, 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 it improves over the experience, like a self-driving car. Or it can be able to understand even human emotions. And um, it can be trained to uh, react to certain uh, emotional stimuli. For example, um, uh, Sophia and Ivo, all these things, uh, all those things were some of them have been granted uh, citizenship as well. Uh, they are uh, they they belong to this kind of yeah. And the final target or the final frontier would have been of course self awareness, and that is that is still out of bounds. If you want to build Skynet, Jarvis, RTD2, you're welcome to do that. Now um, uh, let's come into machine learning part. What? Can I just ask a quick question? Yes, Anish, please. Yeah, so in the AI and the machine learning, all these examples that you gave, are they very problem specific? Like, I mean, you know, uh, or is it just general? Like, it doesn't matter what problem, I can give it a host of problems and I can still solve. Yes, so very good. So this AI is supposed to do that. 
the self powered ai or the mind part they are supposed to do that that whatever problem you throw at it uh, it should be able to solve it uh, but uh, mostly the thing that we i will talk about here and the thing that i know mostly they are very problem specific okay they can uh, do only one task uh, but in sometimes what happens is that uh, you have built up a, a machine for a particular problem but that problem can be after some tweaking tweaking can be matched to some other things uh, and then people can use that in for example there is a there was a, a code uh, written for uh, knots uh, i mean given a knot how to unknot that uh, that was been, that that's been asked to a machine network basically the network learned different algorithms and all and in fact the networks uh, which people were not the people who wrote this jim hilverson and all they were not even expecting what the network also learned is that uh, sometimes before unknotting they would knot it more and then start unknotting uh, so this kind of things they also thought that this part of the state uh, this state can also be used to chase you know the game uh, where mm, you can lose some of your pawns or something to gain something more so uh, this strategy this reinforce that's called reinforcement learning will go there uh, so those if, if certain things have the same strategy then you can actually use that but uh, i mean uh, the things that i know there but of course normally mm, uh, that's that's not something uh, readily available uh, that uh, any problem that you throw uh, or general kind of uh, problem solving machines i don't think uh, they are here yet but you can of course think of sofia and ivo they are already solving it they are walking uh, they are talking with you they are reading your emotions they are translating things they are doing all these things simultaneously okay. uh, so in some sense they are doing that but in in your question that i mean if, if you have a particular problem in mind normally you build a uh, network to solve that and that's I more see. computationally efficient as well because i will i will show you this is very computationally heavy this all I this see. machine thing so I, i will go there and if you have okay. more we can talk after what okay? good so machine learning when we talk about it there is data scientists and all those people are there uh, so for them the, at the industry machine learning is basically a discipline of computer science that uh, uses uh, computer algorithm and analytics to build some predictive models uh, that can solve business problems for example uh, my my whole uh, i mean we, me and with my uh, with one of my friends uh, bala we started at some point which, uh, we started thinking that say i have uh, euro to indian rupees conversion rates I and mean, those data is already there in the google can we predict uh, what would be the conversion rate for the next day uh, all of this uh, neural network thing started back then with the si this simple question but uh, yeah that's uh, that's something you can do as well uh, you can train on the past set of data and then ask uh, uh, what can be the uh, the, the future okay. so that's the industry one but since we are in latex and this group more or less uh, vertical people so here we can you can also uh, put a more nerdy definition of um, uh, machine learning where you can say that a computer program is said to learn from experience e with respect to some class of task t and performance measure p if its performance at task t t as measured by p improves with experience e uh, that's the same thing uh, but yeah in more uh, more little words now so this is the uh, the car, this is the cartoon that you have passed set of data you put it through your machine or code and then you start getting uh, predictions okay so it can be like a say for 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 a mathematician it can be a uh, set of a set of output or set of for experimental phases say uh, you, you can have a set of data and you want to ask what what is the curve that feeds the data and then uh, uh, try to extrapolate uh the data is in some other domain the car fitting thing right that's the same uh, in some sense we'll go there so i have a question regarding that uh, sure, sure. That prediction yeah. part yeah sure yes right. so uh, so how, how can we be sure that we have taken into account all the possible parameters that would govern our prediction excellent, excellent. no you are not sure about it you are not sure about it. of course you are not sure about it and that's why it's 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 a bit different from uh statistical and mechanics card fitting and uh, some 
uh, and 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 that network prediction by some network. So what happens is in some terms there is no direct answer to that because most of the time uh, when we say that we are doing something through neural networks, we don't know how it works. Okay, so this like a neural networks or some all this machine thing, you can think of them as black box. You are putting something and you are getting some output. How it does it, you don't know. But uh, there is one way of thinking is that you know each of this black box or machine, as I will show you afterwards, comes with a lot of variables even orders of thousands and uh, something like that. Okay? So you can think of that your hidden variables or the data uh, that, 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 that the things that might affect your experiment data, uh, somehow they are combined on those, on those hidden variables. But there is no good answer to that because that nobody knows. Okay. Uh, so, so of course, this all these things are very stochastic and very muddy. So there's no good answer to that. Uh, but if it predicts, it predicts. That's the good way to say at this point at least for engineers that's that's it if that predicts it predicts for example uh, google is predicting uh, how how you do write your mail or youtube is predicting which song you would like that is that, sh that that can be a lot of hidden variables for example your emotions or your emotional state your how uh, um, how how anxious you are and all those things uh, but somehow it, it just works at least so far Good. Now let's uh, let let me just go through the types of uh, machine learning structures or algorithms. One of them is supervised learning. That's the most common thing. And at first, I will go through supervised learning only. And today, that's my target to go through uh, supervised learning process. In supervised learning process, what happens that you are providing the machine or the code. So here, I'm using machine or code interchangeably, changeably because. Um, uh, uh, the the code is itself works as a uh, black box and machine, so that's why I want to use that interchangeably. Okay, so the supervised learning, what you do is that you need to provide a very structured set of data. You already know what are the target variables, not the hidden variables provided, just the target variables. Say, for example, uh, you are saying uh, that uh, you, you put a Excel sheet or something. Excel sheet, what you do is um, say in one column the euro date. And the other column, uh, say say in one column the dates, other column uh, the euro, I mean one euro or something, and uh, up the next column uh, say uh, American currency, okay, and third column is Indian rupees, and then first three columns you put it as input, and last column as out, and then train the machine uh, uh, to 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 mix and I mean, to predict from these three inputs euro, uh, dollar, and the date to Indian rupee. And there can be a lot of hidden variables, no? uh, but you don't worry about it. So supervised learning is basically that, that you need to know what are the target variables. What it... Atta, I have a small question. Uh, sure, sure. Atta, here, uh, when you are talking about this uh, machine learning, you are exclusively referring to neural networks, because I have heard that uh, people use uh, things like uh, regression also, like I mean, linear regression or yeah, yeah, linear regression, everything is part of this uh, this machine learning, as I have said, uh, as I have said uh, here. There are a lot of things, a lot of uh, numerical structures and all that's been going on in all these areas, okay? Uh, but at the uh, 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 in this talk, I'm mostly focusing on uh, neural network. Uh, regression, there are some decision trees and all those things are there. I'm not uh, talking about them as of now. No, I'm just, I'm, no, I just want to know that uh, your comment about this uh, black box is having many parameters. Ah, right. that oh, is yeah, all... yeah. Yeah, oh, but yes. when you are doing regression or you are, you are doing this decision tree and all those things, most of the time you are not, uh, you are not uh, doing uh, this black box thing. Uh, but still, those would, be, uh, those would be in some sense. Uh, so, for example, there is something called principal component analysis. What you do is that say you have a lot of uh, you have a lot of data. Uh, uh, you know, say 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 you want to describe uh, how uh, temperature, humidity, and all those things affects um, uh, affects uh, polar bears. Okay, so you have a lot of uh, um, environmental data, and then some of those data are more important than others. Okay? 
So you can learn it's a, it's something called you can call the principal component analysis, which the name as the name suggests. You figure out what are the principal components from your environmental set of data, and only uh, uses that uh, to work with this uh, polar bear bear population and all. Okay, so those things are there, but in those things, most of the time, uh, we are not uh, doing something like uh, uh, something like learning or something. That's the analysis part. Once you want to go to something that uh, improves itself or learns, most of the time that involves at least a neural network. Okay? Mm -hmm. okay. But of course, you, you, before going to neural network uh, as a data analyst or data scientist, what they have to do is they have to clean the data, use principal component analysis and all those things. Because machine learning itself with a neural network is a very resource heavy thing. Okay? So what you want to do is you have to already you want to have some intelligent uh, guess such that your uh, that workload gets minimized okay so all those things as you are saying decision tree and uh, that some uh, the regression is of course is a very statistical mechanics thing as you know uh, regression card fitting all those things are very statistical mechanics thing. you don't uh, throw away anything those are very predictive and uh, you do those analysis clear out your data and from those data you run through a neural network to predict something or learn something whenever there is a learning there is a black box in some sense because as Shubhai was because there will be always be some hidden variables that you don't know. Okay. So, so that's one. So just to clarify, you are saying that whenever we are trying to implement some machine learning algorithm, so uh -huh. so this unsupervised part should be preceded by a supervised. Uh, no, 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 not necessary. Neural networks can you can use networks. I will go there. Unsupervised part also. I'm just talking about supervised. Uh, you can you can you can do a lot of things. A lot of things. Okay. But those, all of them will use this neural network. It's a network of neurons. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no. You just made a comment on that too. Since it is very really resource heavy, that to gain some insight and all. Uh -huh. So for that, we need to do a supervised learning thing before applying neural. Network. People do that. Depends on what is your problem. As uh, Anish was also asking. Uh, uh, depends on what is your problem. For example, say. Uh, say what you want to do. Uh, say you want to. Mm, mm, okay. Say le, le, say say you have a lot of pictures. Uh, all, all all the examples are not very physics, but anyway. So you have a lot of pictures, and you want to understand. You want to learn uh, what is your uh, what is uh, what are what are cats and what are dogs. I mean, who whom of those pictures are are cats and who are those uh, who, are, who are what are dogs? Okay. So what you can do is start a supervised learning where you say that okay these pictures are cats these pictures are dogs you do a structured data you throw it to the computer train it over those structured data once the training is complete i will go what is training so if somebody is not understanding it's fine uh, on this, once the training is complete now if, if you throw a uh, unknown picture of uh, something it would say whether it's a cat or a dog okay this is supervised learning in the unsupervised, what you can do is, for example, there is uh, this person does not belong here or something like that. There's a website. What you can do is you can generate uh, pictures of humans who does not belong here. I mean, uh, who, who does not exist. Uh, those things are mostly unsupervised because there are so many features in my face or the human faces that uh, we don't even know. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, those things get uh, captured by unsupervised. So it's very problem specific. Uh, what kind of question you are asking? And uh, what is your problem at hand? So depending on that, you would choose either supervised or, or unsupervised or both together. Okay. 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 Great. 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 <clears throat> okay. So as I'm saying, so a lot of things has uh, went through. So supervised, uh, this leads uh, a very structured set of data, and machine improves itself uh, through training. What is training? I will go through. That's my target today. And uh, once trained, the machine cannot predict uh, given an input. So for example, I. I Sort of an example. It's a very bad example, but anyway, let's say you go through the, your archive post, uh, postings and uh, mark the papers as interesting. I will look at it later, or uh, beyond recognition, uh, and you do that over the past year of things. And now, uh, once new things comes, your the machine can read your mail, uh, and then it can just tell you in which box the paper should go. Okay, so this kind of questions I mean, depends on the question it's, it's very much depends on the question exact question you are asking and unsupervised learning is as i was just saying that uh, you are not giving any any uh, special uh, data or anything uh, you just you are just showing some data and it, the machine is learning some features i'll give one example uh, that would clear you uh, clear the unsupervised to unsupervised 
Uh, so it it depends on a lot of parameters once i go through all the minimum set of parameters that we need then you can ask this question okay uh, then then i will go to that uh, that thing and uh, mostly the answer to your question is uh, nobody knows uh, anyway <laughs> so that's the unsupervised learning and there is reinforcement learning where it's kind of I, i will go through the reinforced learning example probably tomorrow that's a very interesting thing and people are nowadays all uh, normally That, that the networks and all that people are using in physics are mostly reinforcement learning. So reinforcement learning is kind of in between supervised and unsupervised. Here, what you do is you make up something called an agent that you will go through, and that you train that agent to do certain stuff. For example, this reinforcement learning has been used very recently, probably last year, uh, to get uh, this uh, bootstrap uh, to solve bootstrap equations and. Uh, uh, get uh, some parameters uh, that that people have used reinforcement learning to do that we might go there if time permits some point but okay uh, now deep learning whenever we said deep learning now it's very specific to neural networks and deep learning normally uh, uh, deals with networks with with I mean, multiple uh, number of uh, um, uh, layers or multiple multiple number of uh, layers that i will go through Now there are different types of uh, this thing that I will go. Uh, before that, before going to that types of different neural networks, uh, let's think of uh, first steps or something that people use in in in, in this line of work is they start with uh, with example uh, very close to our head. That's our brain, uh, and so uh, since we are at the end of the day wants to mimic. a human uh, brain and how it works so first idea that people started is uh, thinking of a neuron now a neuron is uh, i don't i'm not a biologist i don't know that much but a uh, neuron can of course it can either fire or not depending on the stimulus so if uh, after uh, a certain amount of stimulus it can it can fire and before that it would not so uh, if i so 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 that in some sense in mathematically what you can think of this uh, neurons as uh, some Uh, functions which are say zero below a minimum value of input and then it can have it can have a you know, it can it can have some some value okay so for example this is something called a sigmoid function you can probably understand this function if you have not been able to read it so this is 1 by 1 plus e to the power minus z uh, this is a very known function to all of you so this sigmoid function uh that the this sigmoid function you see that it's normally zero and after some stimulation it has some value and then again it it just saturates or uh something that mostly been used uh, uh, in in a neural network is also called the redu is a photo of the full form uh, uh anyway i forgot the full form just now uh but anyway so this uh, this uh, this thing is this function is basically uh zero if your z is negative and then it's just linear okay mm. i'll come to the full form as somehow it's not in my mind now. so <coughs> so output of a single uh, neuron this uh, this neuron depends on the output of the neuron that are connected with each of the varied states so this neuron say in my body this this neuron uh, the output of this neuron depends on what are the outputs that it's getting from uh, before uh, before whatever happened now the same thing we do is we mimic these things like that so what we have is these things are called nodes this this black dots are nodes and uh, these are our uh, neurons this nodes some calculations that goes on which are similar to neural uh, and this neuron and we go to the calculations and uh, that's why since these are mimicking uh, neurons and this is just a network of these things so that's why the name uh, Uh, neural networks uh, comes into the picture. Okay? Now the basic structure of neural network is this one. 
So what you have is something Audible. called uh, yeah. So book. Sorry, uh, if you go to the previous slide, what's yes. I mean, what's the difference between this and just some gates connected in some uh, you know normal circuit? Ah, but there no, also no. until some voltage you have zero and then later you have one. Exactly that. Yeah, man. Yeah, you can do that. That's the same thing. Here, what we will do is mathematically mimicking that only. You see that you can just put some function generator or something uh, that would uh, do this thing. It does not matter. You can do that volts and uh, all those things. It does not matter. So it, 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 what you are saying is that you want to do all this thing uh, through some uh, network and real circuits, right? No, what I mean is, yeah, yeah, yeah. What I mean is, what what makes it a neural neural network? I mean, what, ah, what is... so, yeah, that that I will come to. So that's that's okay. the, the main part of the new this neural network thing is the non-linearity that I will come, and uh, okay. I mean I mean that's the difference. But the difference, but of course you can understand this all these things in terms of gates. You, in oh. in fact, neural network can learn gates, the outputs of gates. Yes. You can you can oh. learn that as okay, XOR or something like that. That can also be done. A good question. Yeah. So that that's. I get I get just sure. one question. So yeah, you sure. you had given this uh, different functions. So, is does the um, working of neural network is, is it very sensitive on the choice of these yes. functions? Yes. In fact, it it's uh, depending on the problem. It is very sensitive to the choice. So, now whenever we say that, uh, uh, for as, as Anish was asking, so that's that's the basic structure of a neural network. Okay. Uh, in this neural network, I can change. So far, what you have learned is something called these functions, right? These functions. I will go through that. These functions are called activation functions. I will I will come there. So, mm, by choice of your activation functions and all other things, depending on that, your neural network will perform bad or good. So, how do you create a neural network? What is the ultimate neural network for a given given problem? Nobody knows. You can come up with a different neural network with different functions and uh, solve the problem more easily. That can be done. So, there is no set of uh, set uh, rules uh, which tells you what to use where. There is no such uh, things as that. Okay. 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 Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. I I will come to come to that. All of all of your questions will be answered. Yeah. After this one. Yeah. So these are some set slides I just made, and after that I will start writing. Then things will be get clear. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, as I was saying, uh, this uh, different uh, there are different kind of neural networks. Uh, we'll go first. We'll start with a very primitive thing. That's our. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a supervised neural network, and uh, normally what I'm going to do now, uh, if I, Pavan, is, is it fine if I go like 15, 20 minutes overboard? Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Okay, great. So, um, uh, if, if uh, please, guys, I mean, if, if you have any, uh, I mean, you're getting bored or something, we can we can shift gears at any time. So anyway, so what I'm going to do next is something we are going inside the hood of this neural network. Uh, and normally, if you are really doing data scientists or some analysis here, uh, whatever I'm going to do, uh, you would not require that. Your packages will do that for you. Uh, but I thought that uh, here it's really important to emphasize on how this algorithm works and uh, what exactly we are doing so that you can have uh, more better ideas or you can use it in, 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 in other places in whatever field of things you are working on. Okay? So um, let me now start uh, doing something and let me know if my, uh, oh, by the way, my, my handwriting is really bad. So please let me know if you can read that. Can you read this? Is this fine or I should change? It's good. It's good. Go to yeah, it's okay. It's good. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So essentially, this neural networks are, <laughs> are new, neural networks. You can think of uh, neural networks as uh, some form of uh, function approximators. How is that? I will go there. Function approximators. Now, what you do is that for a given network, for a uh, given network, which is, so whenever I say network, just keep this picture in mind, OK? Uh, so oh, I, I forgot to, uh, since the question, I forgot to mention all the levels. So these are input levels input layer so what you do is whatever uh, thing that you want to put in um, is is uh, is going here so for example say as i was saying that cats or dogs picture for example uh, you what you can do is that a cats and uh, the picture is nothing but in some sense cmyb or rgb 
values, right? So you can put all this data set uh, in, in input here. It can be any any size you want. Okay, these are all those data, and these are called hidden layers. Hidden layers. Why? Because you never know what is the what is going on here. It can actually sometimes you need to, but um, uh, essentially you can forget what exactly is going on in the hidden layer, and you are only in interested in the output layer. For example, say in the cats and dogs business, what you can do is that uh, you can start with a picture of cats and cat and dog, uh, strip it uh, bare minimum to RGB values, put that put those RGB values as input, and uh, set your output layer either to be say one or zero. If it's one, you say that okay, this is dog. If it's zero, then it's a uh, cat, like that. Okay. So input and output layer, are all all of these things are numbers. And those numbers are coming up uh, through this kind of things. And how these hidden layers and all uh, uh, work? That uh, that that I will, I will I will I will go in a, in, in in details now. So, what uh, neural network uh, uh, does is that these are very uh, general function approximators. Uh, I guess there's a question do, in the chat. Yeah. Oh, can we read it? Uh, I'm still looking for the chat. Uh, is, there a, is there a proper mapping between different layer or it's just no no that's it's not it's it's some sense uh, random uh, to begin with it's very random i will i will go there so at the end of this lecture in some minutes you would know all the lead layers what is going on and uh, yeah that's it so just wait for a minute if you have any question about those layers and all just wait for it i will i will i will break it down okay yeah so uh, what what this thing does is that for a given um, uh, neural uh, network, uh, we have many parameters. What are those parameters? I will come uh, there in a, in a, in a, in a bit. Um, so normally, what you do is, do I have a neural network picture? No. For a given uh, neural network, sorry, uh, given neural Network. What you can do is that say you have this kind of thing. Let's say let's make it very simple. Okay, this value say this is y1, this is y2, this is y3. Okay, now what you do is that you say this output, this here, let's say that's y. That y you set to be fz. Where Z is something like this. I will explain what is that. Okay. These are called these things, these things are called weights. Okay. And for each neuron, uh, this each node, there is something called a bias. So this thing, this guy, this guy already have some value, say y1. So to get the value of this y, which is connected to all these three, all this y1, y2, y3, you do this calculation. You first calculate something z. The z is w1, y1, y1, w, y1, and y is connected with the weight w1. You multiply that. w2, y2, w3, y3, plus b. This b is the bias correspond to this table, uh, this this node. Okay, so these are called weights, and this is called uh, bias, as I have said. So that's a, a that that that's uh, uh, that's a set of things. So now, if you look at it here, so each of this uh, each of these uh, lines that you have, they carry a weight, right? And each of these guys, they carry a bias. So if this is very large, then you have a huge number of uh, weights and biases because uh, this thing is connected to uh, this thing can be connected to all of uh, this guy can be connected to all of this in principle okay so there are so many weights and so many biases so there are a lot of uh, set of parameters so all this set of parameters i will denote them by theta i will denote them by theta so theta is collection of collection of all weights and biases. 
okay whenever i say theta these are um, a collection of everything and these things you can theta one theta two and so on so these are say uh, my parameters theta is the collection of the full thing now what it, it, it does is that a neural network is basically a neural network uh, is basically you can think of it as some function which is parameterized by this theta your x is input and your y is output so you can think of this neural network as a um, um, a class or an, a given it's a neural network itself the word neural network associate that with a class of functions uh, which where those functions are basically parameterized by uh, this uh, set of uh, set of thetas uh, the parameters of the network as i said weights and biases okay now or what you yeah so what is above uh, so uh, so this uh, uh, where you wrote this bias and weights Mm -hmm. uh, so is it like y1, y2, y3 is the previous step and the, and the yes. node above is the next step? Yes, yes, exactly. So here where uh, did I, f come from? Which one? This y1, y2, y3, so, right? Is that the question? No, like z is, z is computed from weights and biases. Right? And y1, y2, y3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then how does, how is y computed? Ah, that's what I say. So these are like the input layers. So, this is one network think of this as a single network which is this is the input layer okay. this is the input layer and this is the output so input is something that you are providing okay yeah In, input right. is something that you are providing input is something you are providing for example okay. say uh, it can be a momentum of a particle a 3d particle say these are the momentums uh, yeah. px py pz okay and yeah. you are asking uh, what is it? Uh, m m what is it? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Let's say kinetic energy. Yeah, sure, right? sure. Okay. Okay. So that's 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 the that kind of thing is happening. So y one, y two, y three is here, and for this this uh, say this particular network, this particular network. If I look at sub part, uh, this thing itself looks like the other thing that I draw, right? So here for for this guy, these are the inputs. And this guy will have some, uh, will spit out some output and it will get feed into this layer. Okay. Yeah, yeah sure. Okay. okay. So, in general, when a neural network, a large or whatever size neural network that you have, uh, normally this is what uh, you would say that neural network is basically a very um, uh, general format, my approximators, function approximators, and where those functions are parameterized by these thetas. And what is your target is? You want to achieve, uh, say, uh, this function. This f is some function that you want to achieve, and this is some something that 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 would, that would shoot you. And uh, this f. So normally, if you have a training or something, this is something that you you, you already already know. These are like that your uh, training uh, training parameters. In, 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 in so. Uh, uh, so this is a little bit abstract. So uh, can I just yeah. summarize in a simple sure. example? Tell me if it's right. Uh, the way yeah. I understood yeah. it. Right. So mm -hmm. let's say we take the same cash stocks example that you said some time back, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have let's say uh, uh, some layer of uh, uh, this whatever hidden layer. Let's say like, there are two layers, suppose. And the mm -hmm. input is let's say the uh, you know whatever some data that you give in some bits. That's right. right. And uh, and now in your whatever training kind of thing, what you are essentially saying is that y is fixed to be one. Like for this set of input, y has to be one. Exactly. So what are all the possible uh, values for theta that can give such a uh, exactly. such a thing? And you put exactly. another input, and then you see whether the same theta gives that. You see that it may not. So then you adjust theta so that for both you get the correct answer. Exactly. And then you do this for you know, and then finally you give something that you don't know the answer to, and presumably it should give you the correct answer. Excellent. This is. Uh, Excellent. Yeah, okay. yeah, that, that's the crux of it. So when I'm writing this y equal to fx, that's essentially that thing. So, so for example, that was my going to be my example here. Actually, that said, my this x is my cat or uh, picture of cat or dog. So if this x belongs to cat, then y should be one, and if x belongs to dog, then y should be zero. Okay, and this y output y, the this particular output y is getting generated by neural network, and you want your neural network to give exact output that you you are providing here okay so those are your training and uh, then you can ask a further question afterwards okay so uh, 
so so in, in that sense uh, that's what you want to do and, and and not only that you want to do some further things because you don't want to do very uh, computationally higher value things for example given any set of data say uh, any any continuous function you can in principle have a very large uh, large space and you can just fit it you can you can fit it to uh, some polynomials some very large polynomials who knows uh, but you don't want to do that because that's very, uh, very much uh, resource heavy. Okay, so there are two things that we want to also achieve through neural network. One is scalability, okay, or or, or scalable, scalable in a sense that you want to uh, work out some structure which can, uh, which which uh, where I mean some single algorithm. You want to make up a single algorithm where even if I increase this number of y1, y2, y3 to any y100, uh, that should not matter. That, that algorithm should handle, should handle all uh, whatever uh, set of parameters that I'm showing at it. And the second one is that uh, you want to achieve is efficiency. Of course, that's the target, uh, not for physicists, but uh, yeah, I mean, normally the things that we use, we don't worry about efficiency. Uh, but yeah, that is something, this efficiency is something you're uh, supposed to uh, focus on, okay? Good. Now uh, let's uh, come to a standard standard way of doing things. Uh, uh, here, as I have said, in this this network, and this this network as uh, this uh, simple network, or, or I can do another one. So say you have this kind of thing. This say y1, y2, y3, and this is some yk whatever it is uh, or, or y sorry, uh, n and this is a two layer network that you have and there are a bunch of other nodes okay so here what you have is uh, the z value that i was calculating that is something uh, uh, we say that what is the stimuli that this guy is getting that z is uh, basically sum of uh, i can write k uh, sum w k yk uh, plus p with this notation nobody has a problem right so far because i will use start using uh, changing this notation and using more and more with this uh, notations now okay and then what you do then now see so far all these things are more or less uh, linear uh, so because this uh, this z is basically a linear function of y these things but at the end of the day whatever complicated function that you would have Mostly those would be non-linear. So to get some non-linearity, what you say is that output of this network, y, or output of any neur neuron is always f of z. So z is the input to the neuron, input to the neuron, and y is always the output of the neuron. So whenever I write y, that is some output of some neuron. Okay. And this uh, f that you have, this f, this f is called activation function. Okay, this activation function uh, can be, uh, in, in principle, anything. Any any nonlinear function uh, would work. Uh, but what people have seen with their uh, experience, and I have also seen it, is that uh, here all nonlinear functions are equivalent of course all of them would work give some nonlinear to your network but some nonlinear functions are more equi more equivalent than others uh, uh, so normally what you would see is that uh, uh, this kind of functions uh, that people use normally is either it, 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 uh, it's a, a sigmoid function or sometimes it can hyperbolic, even sine hyperbolic or, 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 or a variety of uh, set of functions are there uh, that can be used here and depends on the particular problem. Uh, sometimes one activation function is more effective than the other in principle in principle any activation function can do any of your job mostly 
but it have been observed that some activation function gives you uh, more better results even uh, some short number of training can give you uh, better results and uh, 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 yeah some some short uh, yeah somebody is there, question uh, yeah. is there, is there, is there, uh, sorry go ahead. Yeah, I was asking whether is there any property these activation functions are satisfy or they're completely like is it uh, is it like they should be nonlinear? So this complete this functions uh, put some nonlinearity in the network, so it, it just have to be nonlinear. That's it. Okay, so it's not like it has to be like you know asymptotically it should be like some step function type. It, it's not like no, that. No, not not necessarily, not necessarily. But most of the time your problem uh, demands those kind of things. I mean, normally the pro problems that you come across, that you would mm -hmm. come across, uh, that would be like that. For example, uh, when you are saying this uh, cats and dogs thing, okay. Uh -huh. uh, normally, what would be like it would uh, ra rather than calculating directly one or zero, uh, what you do is you calculate probabilities. That what is the probability of it being a cat or being a dog, and that number uh, basically belongs from zero to one. Ah, so okay, okay, okay. In that sense, some function, some activations function are more more useful, right? You they don't they don't have to normalize or anything. I That's see. Something. Okay. Yeah. So, 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 you, so there are a lot of activation functions that can give zero and one, right? So, yeah. So, yeah. so, so as, you said, as you said, some are better than the other. So, is there mm -hmm. any understanding why some of them work better? It is uh, that that's what uh, I was also telling Anisha. I mean, it it actually depends on what kind of problem that you have. For example, say as you're saying, if you are using step functions zero and one, okay, nothing else. Then what would happen, for example, if you want to calculate a probability distribution or, or probability of something that you would, you would never get uh, half or some uh, one fourth or those numbers, right? It's always, already, always constrained between zero and one. It cannot uh, give you any output uh, other than zero and one. You can, of course, model your uh, network around that. Zero and one, you can think of that as binary and uh, figure out something or another. Uh, but uh, that, that, that is not the target. No, no, that, that, that I understood. But for example, uh, sigmoid versus what you showed a real loop. Hmm. Uh, so between those two, I mean, those two can take all values, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Those two can take all values, and you can use in principle uh, uh, one over the another. But sometimes what it's been show, seen is that, for example, if you want to re want relu, relu has a linear behavior. Okay, uh, it it behaves very linearly. Where was relu? Yeah. So there you see that this is uh, this is linear. Okay, so what happens is that if you want to do some derivative calculation or something like that, then ReLU is more efficient in something. It gives you uh, better and uh, quick derivatives. Okay, but sometimes it also happens that with this quick derivatives are not something that you are after. You need uh, this kind of sigmoid things are giving you a more accurate or more more fast convergence. That that also happens. So it's very problem specific. There is no set rules which one would work better. Normally, in the packages and all, what you can do is you can run your neural network, train over the same data using different activation function, and observe which one gives you uh, quicker convergence or better convergence or uh, better, and you just use that as a model. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Great. So, any activation functions or anything that you can use, but now uh, why why should I mean uh, why should we still think about it? I mean there is. Uh, no, uh, no guarantee that whatever we are saying uh, should work. But in 1989, there was a very excellent uh, theorem that been proved by George Sivenko, uh, where, where he proved that uh, any arbitrary smooth function, of course, any arbitrary and uh, smooth function. Mm, uh, mm, uh, that can be that can be very well approximated. Very well means I mean in as as close as you want. Uh, very well approximated. Very well approximated mm, by a single hidden network. Right? By a single hidden layer. Of course, theoretically you have to let your hidden layer be having infinite number of nodes, but. Uh, uh, a single hidden layer is sufficient, in principle, uh, to fit any smooth function. That's something is uh, theorem mathematically proved. I, I haven't checked the proof, so not expert. Uh, but but this is a this is a theorem. This is called uh, universality. 
this uh, what is the kind of function uh, so when you say smooth function r to r or uh, uh, is it for, yeah. uh, it's r to no. r yeah it's it can be in complex function as well actually okay okay but single uh, uh, distinct not uh, multi variable uh, function Oh, it can be multi-variable function. Exactly. That that haven't uh, written, but any uh, multi-variable function, the smooth multi-variable function. I see. So when you say single hidden layer, like um, uh, so, if let's say function just for example is say R N to R M or something like that, hmm. um, then the hidden hidden layer it, it can be any any integer or it has there's some constraint on it between M and N uh, or. Uh, no, 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 no constraint. So what it's saying is that uh, if you have this thing, say this is your x and this is your y, okay? Then uh -huh. your function which maps your x to y, uh -huh. okay? If this function f that you are after, that can be well approximated by this network. If you let this number of hidden layers to be anything. I see, I see, I see, I see. Okay, as, okay. as long as you need. Is that okay. Oh, ah. It can be anything. Okay, okay. However long, however large. However long, yeah, yeah. However long you you, you want, it does not matter. And most of the time, what people do, the one trick that uh, since I went to complex number, one trick that they do is that either you can think of each node as a complex number or just use two complex uh, two nodes. They don't care okay. about difference between R to C and all those. I see. Uh, I see. <laughs> but in in principle, this theorem holds there as well. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Uh, so, so uh, and now, now what we have is that so far, what we have is that uh, for a uh, given uh, network with parameter theta, for a given network with parameter theta, what we have is some. Uh, I, I give just yes. just one question. So about the sure. previous theorem, what what happens for finite? Like, uh, how, what is, what is the practical implication of this the theorem? Because practically we uh, will have some n number of modes. Right. Right. Then, then what you do is that you include. Right. Then what you do is that you increase the number of layers. So in in principle, uh, this this thing, as you are saying, it's very non-trivial. But this uh, this uh, infinite length or something here, it can be uh, changed to something else. When I said infinite, it does not mean that for all functions you need infinite number of nodes. It just says that if you allow infinite number of nodes, basically barring your uh, computational, um, if there is no computational restriction over you, then you can create some network. For any function, that's that's the statement. And uh, uh, but but that statement only involves one hidden layer. You can make multiple hidden layers. That that you can do. And 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 hope that this this things uh, things 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 work out. So, but uh, if a given a network with parameters theta, uh, this is something is happening. This f theta is my neural network. So, given an input y, it's giving some output um, uh, y out. And what you would like to have is that your y out should approximate uh, the function that you are after. Say this f. Whenever I said f theta, that is neural network generated, and f is something the function that you want. Okay. Uh, this I'd say this is called the target function. Okay. So what you would like is that uh, this f theta mm -hmm. should go to f uh, f. Uh, this target function. Once that is done, you say that okay, my training is good. Okay, because if I just say for uh, give uh, one data point, one input to one output, just match that and say what should be the prediction, it might not work. So uh, this is the target function. As uh, Shaili was asking, it uh, this uh, as when I was saying the training data, as she was asking the number of data. It actually depends on that, uh, and depends in sense that how much good approximation that you are getting. So it may so happen that if you just give very less number of data, the approximation is bad. And given more number of data, the approximation is good. But uh, sometimes it also happens there is a overfitting or a overfitting problem that I will not go. Uh, but overfitting problems are also there that you have given too many training data points and the network is not getting trained. That also happens. Those those caveats are also there. Now the question is, what do I mean by training? So far I'm just say, saying that uh, that there is the input and there is the output. Uh, but the question is, how do you uh, how do you uh, manage uh, how, how 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 the network uh, change itself to map one input to output? How how this thing is uh, this thing is uh, doing? Uh, I mean, how the network knows that it's doing good or bad? So what you introduce introduce is something called a cost function. Okay. 
so far you already know about activation function weights biases and now cost function now cost function is something that says the network whether it has done good or bad for example a trivial cost function would be of this form you just say that given the same input basically uh, this difference and there is an average over uh, this half factor i have just introduced after for, for a convenience this average over all samples all samples in the set all all data that you already know uh, this cats and dog picture the set of cats and dog picture that you already have demarcated those are like my samples and uh, this is the average over all samples now you see if this thing is well approximated by this f this f theta is, f is very well approximated by f, uh, this f theta uh, then that means this should go to zero right so the target is you want to minimize this cost function Again, this cost function is very arbitrary. It depends on arbitrary in a sense. It again depends on what kind of question you are asking, uh, what kind of problems that you have in hand. And uh, specifying is a, a cost function is actually, uh, I would say, specifying a cost function, uh, specifying cost function is as is, is equivalent to specifying a Hamiltonian. Why is it so? Probably you can understand after some time. Mm, specifying cost function is basically equivalent to uh, specifying in, in our physics, uh, specifying a Hamiltonian or Lagrangian. It's that important to the problem. Hamiltonian or Lagrangian. Okay. Then what you want to do is you want to um, uh, minimize uh, this this cost function. So now you see, uh, say you have n number of samples. So for n number of samples, this uh, uh, C theta means it depends on what are the uh, in internal parameters that you have. The C theta is some half and then say 1 over n, you have the n number of samples. This S are basically say your um, each sample, each each data point. Okay. And this thing is your uh, C theta. So S is the index of uh, sample. Now, what, what you have, it, have is a picture like this, and this is what you want to do. You have y inputs, and this is y output. Y, y output is your f theta of y in. Okay? And then when we say data points or anything, then these are like your training, training variables. Okay, this is the training data. Okay? So for this particular y input, you want to have your network predict this. For this one to this, this one to this, and see this is similar to your card fitting. What essentially this network will do is generate some function like this. Okay, this is the network prediction. Method. Network prediction. That means that you have set this this amount of data for your training, and if you ask what is the value here, it would just say that value is uh, the output should be here in this uh, in this this point, right? So in that sense, this is this minimizing c is uh, one can thought of this as some least square fitting or something that you want to make. so uh, fancy card fitting here but that does not mean that machine learning one should not just minimize it in terms of uh, card fitting only because that would be like saying your uh, all quarter mechanics is about is just a large silver space and all those things there's nothing new there's no new physics kind of thing so there are a lot of uh, good things that goes into the uh, into this picture, and what essentially we are doing is, uh, as I said, uh, why, why I said that this is like a Hamiltonian or something. What essentially you are uh, thinking of, I mean, you can think of, is that. Uh, yeah, just, sorry, just, so what it, yeah. So so uh, so you are uh, just. I just want to just clarify this. So uh, you are saying that our network is such that uh, I mean it can predict the value. That it has not seen. I mean, I mean, uh, suppose say, along the x-axis, okay, mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. have a uh, we have a time like thing going, okay, and, sure. and and we are trying to sort of say understand the evolution of a system, right, right, good, right. So so say I am just uh, have data between t not to t final, right. right. So, mm -hmm. so so now if I want our algorithm to predict something, can it predict mm -hmm. something? Beyond T naught, or it should be between T naught to T F. 
right so so there there comes the physicist no that uh, you can get some arbitrary number out of your network as well nobody said that your network is perfect you have to really uh, make the interpretation on your own so if you if you, you have to understand whether that is possible or not for example any probability if you want to learn your network some probability or something it can uh, give you some number beyond one for some instances that does not mean that network does not work or anything you just throw away that part you just say that okay for that part that particular thing particular situation my network is not doing anything i have to change something somewhere it's really up to you okay. good so uh, so how how long do i have pavan is it uh, it's already 420 oh it's a one hour thing no yeah um, but oh, if oh, it's oh. up to you um, maybe, uh, maybe me... if it's a good time to stop you can stop Mm, let me just see. Let me just see. I think I will just go a bit five minutes and then I will I will I will, I will stop. Just just uh, some more things and then you can ask generic very generic questions. So, sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. Good. So what essentially is happening is that uh, what you what you do have to do is that you have to minimize this c as I said this cost function that's the target. So in some sense what what you have is I mean the way I would like to think of it is in the following form. Let's say you have these are your theta directions. I mean all the parameters that you have, all the weights and biases and everything. And uh, for each uh, thing, what your c theta is. Like this c theta, you can think of c theta in sense of this cost function. You can think of it as some uh, some potential or something like that. So what is happening is that you are sitting at some point for some values of theta, and you want to go to. Sorry, this is a very bad. So say you are sitting at this point, and you really want to flow in this direction. Okay. So this is like a uh, uh, this is your c theta. Because this is the minimum of c theta, so you want to do something like a uh, sliding down the hill kind of thing. What you do is that you do a gradient descent. I I, I know I mean, everybody more or less understand what is a gradient descent kind of thing. Uh, uh, so that that's what you want to achieve. So what you start with a so so what you do is that with the neural network you start initialize your weights and bias to any random values. So initially your network does not have any meaning. It's just a set of uh, neurons with random weights and biases. Here. It's just some random weights and biases here, here, everywhere. Then for first data, first data point, first input layer, you calculate what is the output with these random values. Okay. And then you calculate what is the cost function associated with that output, well, with that value. And then go through all the sample that you have. Then from that average cost function, you want to minimize that average cost function. So for that, you would they would take derivatives with respect to each of these uh, parameters, these weights or biases. And uh, uh, what you would do is you would change your weights and biases such that this thing gets uh, this thing gets minimized. So that means for each step, for each step, uh, what you want to each step in a sense, first you go through all the samples, do this minimization. Again, go through all the samples, do the minimization, and and do go on, go forth. Once you reach the minima, you say that okay, the machine is, or the network is trained. So for each step, uh, what you want to do is you want to change your uh, theta j's, which are your uh, initial, um, which are your uh, parameters, such that theta j goes to some theta j minus eta delta c del theta j. So c is the cost function, and this is the last uh, term that you would know. This is uh, something called step size parameter. Step size parameter, or the learning rate. So for each parameter, you want to do a gradient descent such that this thing, this theta j, uh, do such things that such that this c, uh, this this cost function. Uh, gets uh, gets gets minimized, okay. And this is the last parameter that you would need to run any package. So you now you know what is activation function, what is weight, what is bias, okay. 
and uh, now you know what is your um, uh, landing rate as well these are the four things mainly that you need uh, to very basic uh, to run a very basic uh, neural network in any 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 coding things or anything that you know that you want but normally what happens this cost function to calculate this cost function the sample size are very big these are sorry sayal you have a question yes yes also uh, yeah. uh, so this could also depend on your starting point right that conversions so yes. somehow you might be lucky and uh, start near some minima or maxima depending on whatever yes yes and i can start there as well i can be stuck yeah, here yeah yeah well. what what so if was... it's not a global thing yeah yeah exactly yeah. very good i mean that happens that happens that's a very very practical situation there are way out of it there are some algorithms but those are all some 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 different algorithms that i might uh, go into details but you don't need it but uh, I, I, for for this level i would say that those are very real problems but we don't need to worry about it uh, right now to understand how it works but of course those are real problems Uh, if you stuck in a local minima and all this thing happens now uh, one of the one way uh, what was the, that, that was the last statement that was going to make uh, for today is that uh, say you have normally when you are, i'm talking about these samples what you have is a 10000 or 20000 set of data okay say that there is always a that already a very large database of things available free open source that you can just use say this cats and dogs data are already there I mean, there are a bunch of uh, ten thousand, forty thousand pictures of cats and dogs. Each of them labeled, uh, which one is cat, which one is dog. You can just start with it, with that data, okay, and then take it as a training data and go through this minimization process. But you see, forty thousand sample, then forty thousand these derivatives and all are very time consuming. So first thing that you do is normally you do this averaging of the C over randomly chosen sample. Say you have ten thousand sample. you to calculate this cost function and do this minimization this particular uh, minimization uh, minimization is and change the change of this parameter over randomly chosen sample it's not all of them okay this randomness uh, this randomness saves you some computational times of course uh, the time of course uh, to uh, yeah and then uh, this randomness also sometimes uh, take you out of a global minima uh, sorry those are called batch that's also called batch so so batch size is something normally you have to select in any package that you have that what is the batch size so if you say batch size is 100 that mean that means even if you have for 400 440000 samples that this average to calculate this cost function will only went over 100 numbers at a time so it would among this 40000 data it just randomly choose 100 first do this calculation then randomly choose other 100s or some other data set data from, from the 40000 do this thing and it to do it uh, for over the whole whole full 40000 uh, data and once that's done it would start again and try to minimize your cost function okay so that's the uh, normal way of doing this thing and since there is a the sampling is involved this particular method of choosing a sample and doing this thing is called stochastic gradient descent okay uh, these are called uh, stochastic gradient descent and this is something also in packages that you have to uh, you can use Uh, that you have to uh, specify that what are this stochastic uh, wh what is the procedure that want to do to minimize things so uh, you can use this stochastic gradient descent and in short in python and all it just people just use sgd if you just write sgd uh, you can understand what exactly uh, you have to do i think i would stop here and tomorrow i will start with this uh, gradient descent itself in some some function i'm going a bit slow but tomorrow i'll pick up a bit speed and uh, do things quick okay uh, i'll yeah. stop recording no yeah sure